we're going to talk a little bit now about the difference between accuracy and precision. And they are not the same thing. They're difficult to use sometimes because a lot of people think that they are the same thing and they use the words interchangeably. Unfortunately though in science you can't do that. There is a very fine distinction between precision and accuracy. So let's look at the facts. In science most of the measurements, most of the numbers that you use are measurements and because of that they are limited to a certain degree of precision and that depends on the measuring device itself. If you look for instance at a ruler this ruler is precise to the nearest millimeter and then one estimated position and like we said before that estimated position would be a zero or a five. So if I were to measure something with this ruler I might measure it and the measurement might be 4.75 centimeters. That is four whole centimeters seven millimeters and my estimated position and this remember was where the error was the error is in the last position that position can be either a zero or a five it has to be rounded to one or the other well every measuring device has a degree of precision some measuring devices might give you one more digit or two more digits or three more digits depending on how carefully that measuring device was manufactured and that costs money so in a classroom you might use a ruler in something an industry setting you might use a micrometer that costs a thousand dollars instead of a ruler that costs fifty cents point I'm trying to make is precision is expensive because it has to do with how carefully the device is manufactured and that costs money. So let's take a look at, at, at precision in terms of numbers. Let's say that, that, um, that you do some measurements on something, uh, measure, maybe with a stopwatch and, and your your measurements using the stopwatch you take say five measurements and your measurements work out to be let's see the first measurement we can say was 2.10 seconds and then you measure the maybe it's a ball rolling down a ramp and you measure it as 2.05 seconds and then you measure it again you might say it's 1.85 seconds then you measure it again it might be oh 2.35 seconds and then you measure it again it might be 2.22 seconds well, this is the kind of kind of data that you collect in a uh, high school physics lab or physical science lab where you have five different measurements with a stopwatch and they're they're different from each other well that's your measurements and then let's take a look at uh, some other lab person's measurements for the same ball rolling down the same ramp. You hand them the stopwatch, they run five trials, and this is what they get. They get uh, oh, 2.80 seconds, 2.77 seconds, and then they get 2.77 seconds again, and then they get 2.78 seconds again, and then they get uh, 2.77 seconds again. So this is your data. This is their data. If you look at these two columns, then in the data collected, you can see that the data you collected was not as precise as your partner's data. And that's because your measurements weren't as repeatable as your partner's measurements. Your measurements varied more than your partner's measurements did. And this is because the measurements you took were not very consistent. The partner's times were very consistent. However, think about this. 
if you look at the average of these two columns, if you look at the average of these two columns, your average works out to 2.11 seconds. And the, your partner's average works out to 2.78 seconds. And even though your partner's av average might be, or your partner's measurements might be closer to each other, more repeatable, more precise, they may in fact not be as accurate. In other words, the average accuracy of your measurements might be better than the average accuracy of your partner's measurements, even though your partner's measurements are more precise. They're more precise because they're more, more repeatable, closer together. They don't vary as much. However, they're not as accurate because the definition of accuracy is how close a measurement comes to the accepted or known value. And if your teacher tells you that the actual value is 2.10 seconds, that's your standard of comparison, and your measurement is more accurate, even though it's not as precise. Now, another way to look at that is to look at that in terms of uh, shooting arrows at a target. And this is the, the type of example that a lot of people are familiar with. If you, if you look at these numbers over here, they represent a situation like this. Let's suppose you shot arrows at a target. And those arrows were literally striking the target all over the place. Well, about the average position of those arrows would fall very close to the bullseye. The average position would fall very close to the bullseye. If you look at these over here, you have a target similar to this, where the arrows strike very close to each other, but the average position is far away from the bullseye. The bullseye represents the accepted value, and your average is very close to the accepted value. And that's also why when you make a graph and you plot data points on a graph, that's why you grab a ruler and draw a best fit line down through those data points because that line shows the average position of the data points. So even though you're not, your data points are not very precise, the average accuracy might be pretty good. And that line represents the average accuracy. There is your average of these times. In terms of a target, it would look like that. The average position of the arrows would be within the bullseye in terms of a graph, the best fit line shows the average position of the data points. And that is the difference between accuracy and precision. Accuracy and precision. Precision is how repeatable a series of measurements are, how close they come to each other. Accuracy has to do with how close your measured value comes to an accepted value, a known value. You don't know if you're accurate or not unless you have an actual value to compare it to. We're going to talk just a little bit about relative error. We've already talked about accuracy and precision. You know what accuracy is. You know what precision is. Precision is a measure of how close your measurements come to each other, repeatability of measurements. Accuracy is how close you come to the actual value. And this was the data that we talked about in the previous video. It was time data measured in seconds. And when we added that up, we got an average of 2.11 seconds, which was, we said, 
close to or closer to the actual value of 2.10 seconds that your teacher gave you. That's your comparison, your standard of comparison, 2.10 seconds. So that's what you really compare your accuracy to. You Remember I said you don't know if you're accurate unless you have something to compare it to. And that's really why you take multiple measurements when you do an experiment. You take multiple me measurements because usually you don't know what the accepted value is. So really you're just shooting in the dark. So you shoot a lot of times and you be as careful as possible. Hopefully your data will wind up being close to the actual value, whatever it is. In this case, we've given you the actual value. It's 2.10 seconds. Well, to be able to numerically quantify that accuracy, we have to use something called relative error. And relative error works like this. In order to calculate relative error, we're going to take your measurement and subtract from that the actual value or the accepted value and divide that by the actual value and then multiply that by 100 and that will give you a certain percent of error and it will tell you whether you're above the accepted value or below the accepted value so we can go ahead and set this problem up let's say that your value was 2.11 seconds and the actual value we said was 2.10 seconds And again, we're going to divide that by the actual value, which is 2.10 seconds. And you can see that the units are all going to factor out. So there's not going to be a unit in the answer. And then we're going to multiply that answer by 100. And that will tell you what your percent error is. And I just calculated that. And the percent error works out to 0.48%. 0.4%. 8%, which is pretty darn good. It looks like our value, since it's a positive number, was over the accepted value by just under one half of a percent, or 0.48%. And that is called relative error. And so anytime you do an experiment, you can compare, if you have an accepted value, you can compare your value to the accepted value and figure out your relative error and that will tell you how close you really are to the accepted value.